Hello, it's me Yvonne Abro, your local non-binary witch, and I'd like to talk about Samhain today. So Samhain is an interesting holiday because um, it has at least four aspects to it. The first one is the sort of horror aspect, the idea of confronting our inner demons, as it were. Then there's the I guess we could call the mischief aspect, the trick or treat. There's the commemoration of ancestors. And then there's the acknowledgement of the season. Now, each of these aspects of the holiday has a different history and a different, uh, a different impulse behind it. Um, but I think they're all important in how we celebrate the modern festival. And... Also, some of them are notably missing from the secular celebration of Halloween. So, I find the the horror aspect is difficult for me. I can't watch horror movies. Um, I probably would wuss out in a haunted house. Um, not really interested in, like, ghosts and all that sort of stuff. Um, and... So, you know, it's like, yeah, OK, it's sort of interesting, but mm, mm, I guess people need it. Mm. Um, and I do think it's important to confront our dark inner wasp names and see if we can come to terms with them, bring them into the light of consciousness and just generally deal with that side of things. Um and also, you know, as a witch, it's quite nice to be walking through a forest and someone says, ooh, scary in the dark. And you go, I'm the scariest thing in this forest. Um, and that's a nice feeling to have because, you know, you've got the magical wherewithal at your fingertips to uh, deal with any oogly booglies that might arise. Um, as to more physical threats like bears and strange men and all that sort of thing um yeah that the way to deal with those is safety in numbers i guess so um but supernatural threats yep yeah, we've got those down that's fine so the you know the aspect of dealing with one's inner psychological trauma torment um you know darker aspects of the psyche that's really important and that's why people dress up as demons and vampires and i don't know what um and i you know think that's important so then there's the mischief aspect and most ancient festivals have a mischief aspect to them in some way because <coughs> um ancient societies were very hierarchical and everything was very sort of right you've got to do it like this and um, you must conform to these norms and so on and so forth so the opportunity to invert those norms and do something out of the ordinary was really important and we see that a lot at Yule as well um, and a number of other festivals that involve dressing up so um, the opportunity to go and you know, um, put a bunch of for sale signs from the neighbourhood on one person's lawn or, um, I don't know, hang bicycles from the lampposts or fill the local fountains full of froth or something um, was a very great good way of letting off steam. And that's really important. Um and I think even the modern version of it, trick or treat, um, which is more treat than trick these days, is also important because how often do you stick your front porch light on and, you know, hand out candy to people you don't know uh, who show up at your door dressed as funny characters? Um, there are no other festivals where we do this anymore. And I think it's important as a community thing that we're, you know, at least people are making a connection, albeit very briefly. So I think that's a lovely thing. Um, and <coughs> so, yeah, the mischief aspect is really important. Um, 
acknowledging the turning of the seasons is a really important aspect of the the festival too um especially in north america where you've got the shortest spring ever so spring festivals just don't have quite the impact that to my mind anyway um you know like beltane it's the grass pops up, the everything bursts out green, and then we're into the summer five minutes later. It's like, where was the build-up to spring? Ah. Anyway, we're talking about sowing. So, like, everybody really loves all the full foliage and the, you know, the fact that the days are getting cooler and we can actually go for hikes and just the beautiful colours on the trees and everything just putting on a big show of red and orange and yellow and just you know and you know it's going to be gone and in a normal year as opposed to a one that's been messed up by climate change um you're expecting a big dump of snow after so you know it's it's a, autumn is a very dramatic season in north america so i i can totally see why people are really really into it um so that's important and you know finally the celebration of ancestors and the beloved dead super important when do we get to talk about people we love who have died right i mean one of the things that i build into uh, our sowing ritual is the opportunity for people to bring a photo of a loved one who has died and talk about them and then we all say the person's name and that is just so cathartic and so beautiful and I just love it. And it's uh, I've been doing it for about, mm, about two decades now and it's really important to me. Um, and you know, this year uh, I'm commemorating my mum who died uh, on Remembrance Day last year. And so um, that was extra important this year. And... I just think that, you know, our society brushes death under the table and doesn't talk about it and doesn't think about it. And, you know, the beautiful thing about our pagan Sabbaths is, or pagan Wheel of the Year, is that we go through the whole cycle of life in those Sabbaths and you can see um, the whole birth, death, rebirth cycle happening over and over again and it's just immensely reassuring and I find it very comforting and very you know it's after doing it for 33 years it's really sunk into me that yes there is life after death and yes the you know everything is reborn because that is the way of nature and it's very comforting and so you know, yeah, Salem, Samhain is a solemn festival and it's, um, uh, but it's very beautiful and it's very, you know, I just think the opportunity to rest and take stock and commemorate the beloved dead is vital to the health of the psyche to, to really do that and yeah, you know, it's not all jollity all the time, um, but the solemn and deliberate commemoration of the dead. You know, somebody said in a comment on Jack Shannock's video that um, society wants us to get on with it and stop grieving and just get on with our lives and and, you know, forget about the dead. Um, and that's not an option. You know, we need to take that time to commemorate those people. You know, traditional cultures have mourning rituals where you're in deepest mourning for the first month and then you go through like a phase, sort of phased reintroduction to social life kind of thing. Um, and, you know, think about Victorian mourning dress they had like you had to wear black for the first year and then you know you had to wear very deepest black for the first few months and then you kind of relaxed it a bit and gradually 
went back to normal clothing after about a year or so. Um, I think that the fact that back then, okay, this person's wearing black, they're in mourning, be nice to them kind of thing was really helpful as a social custom that, yeah, you know, this person is is upset so treat them nicely um and we've lost a lot of that like you know you can go to a funeral and there would be people i always wear black to funerals and sometimes people take the piss out of me for wearing black to funerals i'm like this is a really important part of the ritual i am wearing black right i mean come on um so you do you obviously um but that's me so I wish you a joyful, solemn, deep, profound Hallow's Tide. And because uh, we're not out of Hallow's Tide yet, um, we've still got remembrance to come. Um, and I, you know, I kind of feel that it, that remembrance and the trans day of remembrance and <coughs> all of the uh, commemorative things at this time of year should all be part of the Hallow's Tide um, ob observance kind of thing. Um, they're all part of the same phenomenon, really. Anyway, I wish you a joyful and solemn and profound Hallow's Tide. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>